Are you looking for a quick guide on how you can create a Lighthouse logo in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Envato Task Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this Lighthouse logo using Adobe Illustrator. To complete this tutorial, you'll need this Robinson fund from Envato Elements. So make sure to check out Envato Elements where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. All ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. Plus, no locking contract, which means that you can cancel anytime. You can subscribe right now with the link in in the description. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width and the height to 850 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen. Go to window in the menu bar and first of all, make sure that the control panel is active and then open all the panels that have this check mark. Now go to view and show grid to enable the grid. Go again to view, but this time to snap to grid to enable the snap to grid feature. And for this tutorial, you need a grid line every five pixels. So let's go to edit, preferences, guides and grid. Enter 5 in this grid line every box. Click OK to apply the changes. And let's start by selecting the rectangle tool from your toolbar. You can either click and drag to create a new shape, or much easier, you can simply click on your artboard, set the width to 95 pixels and the height to 210. Click OK to create this new shape. Move to the control panel, and first of all, make sure that the alignment is set to artboard and then just click these two buttons to easily move your shape in the center of the artboard. Now continue in the appearance panel to change the look of your shape. Keep the fill color set to white, select the stroke and increase the weight to five points. Also align it to inside and replace the color with one, 20 and 96. Move to the swatches panel and click this button to save your stroke color because you'll need this color many times as you put together this lighthouse logo. Click OK to add it inside the swatches panel. Now press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on your shape. Switch to the direct selection tool and use it to move this shape a few pixels to the right to make it snap to the grid. And now select just this point. Hold down the shift key and drag it 20 pixels to the left. Keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 20 pixels. Move to the left anchor point and this time drag it 20 pixels to the right. Now click inside this shape to select it. Press Ctrl C and then Ctrl F to add a copy in front. Reselect the rectangle tool and let's use it to create a 95 by 40 pixel shape. Select the fill and remove the color. You can press Shift and X to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Switch to the selection tool and let's align this rectangle with the bottom edge of your existing shape. Now hold down the Shift key and drag this shape 45 pixels up like this. When you're done, hold down the R key and drag a copy of this rectangle 80 pixels up in this position. Now hold down the shift key to select both of these rectangles and go to Object, Compound Path and Make. This will turn your two rectangles into a single compound path. Hold down the shift key to select it along with the copy of your first shape. Let's also open the Pathfinder panel and click this intersect button. You can quickly turn this group of shapes into a new compound path by pressing Ctrl and 8 and then reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar. Use it to create a 5 by 10 pixel shape. Switch to the selection tool and move this rectangle in this position. You can press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on your selected shape. Select these two points, 
move to the control panel and set the corners radius to 2.5 pixels. Now select this shape and move to the appearance panel to add a four point stroke. Keep this color, open the stroke flyout panel and remember to check this round join button to add a bit of roundness to the bottom corners of your shape. Now press Ctrl and 0 to zoom back on your entire artboard. Press Ctrl and plus to zoom in a bit. Switch to the selection tool and remember to hold down the Alt key to drag a copy of this shape in this position. Drag another one in this position. Let's drag one more copy in this position and select the stroke to replace the color with white. Select the fill and do the same thing. And again, drag a copy down in this position. Reselect the rectangle tool and this time use it to create a 55 by 20 pixels shape. Select the stroke that's applied for this new shape and remove it. Select the fill and replace it with your saved color. Use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact position. You can press again Ctrl and plus to zoom in on your selected shape. Reselect the rectangle tool and this time use it to create a 5 by 10 pixel shape. Replace this color with white and then go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Drag this move horizontal slider to 10 pixels. Increase the number of copies to 4. Click OK to apply this effect and then go to Object and Expand Appearance to expand your effect. Press Shift, Ctrl, and G to ungroup these shapes. Let's lock this shape to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident. And now you can use the direct selection tool and easily select the top anchor points. Move to the control panel and set the corners radius to 2.5 pixels. Reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar. This time use it to create a 65 by 5 pixel shape. Select the fill and replace it with your saved color. Select the stroke and apply the same color. Increase the weight to 5 points. Open the stroke flyout panel and first of all align the stroke to outside and then check this round join button. Now use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. Return to the rectangle tool and use it to create a 55 by 25 pixels shape in this position. Remove the stroke that's applied for this new shape. Use the same tool to create a 10 by 25 pixels shape in this position. Fill it with white. Create a similar shape in this location and a 15 by 25 pixels rectangle in this position. Move to the Layers panel to lock this shape so you can easily select these top points. Set the corners radius to 5 pixels. Reselect the rectangle tool and use it to create a 65 by 5 pixels rectangle. Fill it with your saved color and set the corners radius to 2.5 pixels. Now press Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit and use again the rectangle tool to create a 55 by 35 pixels rectangle in this location. Make sure that you have it filled with your saved color. Switch to the selection tool and use it to select these top points. Let's set the corners radius to 27.5. Return to the rectangle tool and use it to create a 15 pixel square in this location. Switch to the direct selection tool and use it to select the top points. Go to object, path and average. Check this both box and click OK to easily turn your square into a triangle. Now you'll have two overlapping points in this position. So click one of them and then click this button to remove it. And then select the remaining point and set the corners radius to 2 pixels. Now reselect the rectangle tool and use it to create an 85 by 15 pixels rectangle in this position. Remember that you can press Shift and X to quickly swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and increase the weight to 5 points. 
Use the direct selection tool to select the right side of this rectangle and press the delete key to remove it. Open the straw flyer panel and check this round cap button which will add a bit of roundness to the ending points of your path. Using the direct selection tool, now you need to select this point and drag it 25 pixels up like this. And then select this point and move it 25 pixels down in this position. When you're done, reselect the rectangle tool and use it to add a 60 by 5 pixels rectangle in this position. Press Shift and X to swap the fill and straw color settings. Continue with the direct selection tool and set the corners radius of this rectangle to 2.5 pixels. Now use the selection tool to select this rounded rectangle along with this path and go to object, transform and reflect. Check this vertical box and click the copy button to add some copies of your selected shapes. Hold down the shift key and drag them to the left in this exact position. Now select these copies along with the original shapes. Right click on your selection and go to Arrange and Send to Back. This will move your selected shapes behind the rest of the shapes that make up your logo. And now you can press Ctrl and 0 and Ctrl plus to zoom back on your entire logo. Reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar and use it to create a 125 by 40 pixels shape. Use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. Now switch to the direct selection tool and select just this point. Drag it 5 pixels to the right. Move to this point and drag it 5 pixels to the left. Now hold down the shift key to select both of these points and move to the control panel to set the corners radius to 10 pixels. Reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar. As usual, you can click on your artboard to create a 15 by 25 pixels rectangle. Let's move it in this exact position. Select the fill and remove the color. Select the stroke and make it white. Increase the weight to 5 points and don't forget to align it to inside. Continue with the direct selection tool and use it to select these top points. Set the corners radius to 7.5 pixels. Reselect the rectangle tool one more time and use it to create a 235 by 90 pixels shape. Remove the stroke that's applied for this new shape and fill it with your saved color. Let's use the selection tool to move this shape in this exact location. Set the corners radius of this rectangle to 10 pixels and then select the type tool from your toolbar to add a little piece of text. Let's focus on the control panel to set the settings for the text that you're about to add. First of all, select the Robinson font, which you can get from Envato Elements. Increase the size to 70. Open the character flyout panel and set the tracking to 30. Now you can click on your artboard and type in Lighthouse. Press the escape key when you're done and go to type and create outlines to turn your text into vector shapes. Fill these shapes with white. Hold down the shift key to select this text along with this rounded rectangle. Click again this rounded rectangle to make it the reference shape and then click these two buttons to easily move your text in the center of this rounded rectangle. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job, subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.